Good Sunday morning. This is Bishop Key Clark and welcome to Word Online. Listen, like, share, comment. Let somebody know that Word is online and we've got words to live by. Repeat after me the Word Assembly affirmation. We, the members of Word Assembly, speak by faith that we are a people thankful for our salvation, serious about our education, and committed to the demonstration of God's love to this world. We are consistent in giving the tithe and the offering knowing that God will give us what we need, when it is needed, and more than what is needed. We are submissive to the Spirit, cooperative with our leaders, and loving with one another. We are doers of the word, bearers of spiritual fruit, and we are victorious in all that we say and do. Now, let's get ready for the word. Tell somebody I'm here only because of God. Come on. God brought me. Tell somebody God taught me. God kept me. Hallelujah. Come on, sing about it. Thank you. 
that you tune in wherever you are. And I pray that our time together in the word will prove itself to be profitable, to cause your life to be lived in a better way. Because I believe when Jesus says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that we really need in this day and time, some words to live by. Listen, I want to invite you when you can't catch us online, that you can always catch us in person 8601 MacArthur Boulevard in the city of Oakland, Castlemont High School. Before we get our time in the word, here's what I need you to do. I need you to like, I need you to share. And when something is said that touches your heart, I need you to comment. Let's pray. Father, in your name, we thank you for this opportunity. I bless you for my brother, my sister. I thank you for my friend. And I pray, Father God, that our time in the word today, that you would bless them. I pray that you would arrest their attention, place it on thee and thee alone, and that you would speak to them right where they are in Jesus' name. Now, there's a prayer that I pray whenever I get ready to study the word of God or share the word of God. And if you don't mind, I'd like you to repeat this prayer after me. Simply says, dear God, you know me, everything about me, based upon what you know about me. Say something to me that will cause my life to be better after hearing this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Listen, I am so grateful to God for technology that it allows me to come 
right where you are. And so I want you just to relax. If your Bible's on your smart device, or if you're like me, you got a Bible in hand, I, I just want to spend some time in the Word of God. You can see by that picture, I've been using my Bible. Listen, I want to talk for the next couple of weeks about how does God feel about you? How does God feel about you? I say that because we're living in a day and time, brothers and sisters, where feelings have taken center stage, where people are expressing how they feel, explaining to you why they feel that way, and enforcing you to adjust to how they feel. Feelings have taken center stage. And I really believe that part of the disconnect from a life that is productive, and a life that stagnated is because that person chooses to live life not really understanding how God feels about them. And I say that because when you understand how God feels about you, it will cause you to feel about yourself the way you need to so that you can make the decisions and you can move in a direction that causes your life to be productive. How does God feel about you? Interesting thought when you think about it, isn't it? What, what do you think God feels when your name is mentioned? What, what do you think God feels about you at your high points? Or what does God feel about you at your low points? You see, this series is going to speak to several categories of people. The first category of person that uh, or category of people that this is going to speak to are those who believe that you have to do something for God to feel a certain way about you. Or let me say it this way, that your actions motivate his feelings, that if you're doing good, then he feels good about you. But if you're doing bad. He feels bad about you. I want to say to that group of people, you're wrong. God's character is never swayed by your conduct. Let me say it again. God's character is never swayed by your conduct. You see, the way God feels about you right now is the way he has always felt. And it is the way he's always going to feel. Because God does not change. You hear the Hebrew writer saying it very clear. That Jesus the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Why is that? Because he's perfect. And perfection does not need to be improved. So when it comes down to how God feels about you, his feelings about you don't change. The second group of people that I want to talk to are those who believe that God's feeling is different depending on where you are with your faith in him. You see, there are those who believe because God is their father or their, uh, let me say, because they're in relationship, because God is not just their creator, but that he is their heavenly father. A lot of people think because they are saved that God feels better about them than he does those who are unsaved. I want to say to you, you're wrong. When Jesus died, he just didn't die for a set group of people, though there are only a few, uh, there are only those who are going to accept him, and he knows that in his omniscience. But when Jesus died, he died for the world because God feels the same about all of us. And the third group I want to talk to of those who feel as though God is just done with you because your lifestyle has been so ungodly, it's been so raggedy, it's been so unorthodox. Well, I want you to know I'm a living witness that God's feelings about you and no matter what you've done, that you are not done. Well, Bishop Clark, how does he feel about me? I want to take the time and use feel as an acronym if I could. F-E-E-L.
how does God feel about you? And I want you to understand something. That how God feels about you is always expressed in what God does for you. How God feels about you is always expressed in what he does for you. Not what he gives to you, but what he does for you. How he works on the inside is an indication of how he feels about you. Now, let me tell you why I want you to hear me, and I'll get to the first point today. Let me tell you why this is so important. Because when you understand how God feels about you, your feelings will not drive your decisions, but how he feels about you will. When you understand how God really feels about you, your feelings will take the back seat and you will make decisions based upon how he feels about you. How does God feel? F-E-E-L. Let me give you the F today. God feels about you and his feelings are expressed in what he does to you, what he does in you, what he seeks to do through you. And F, F is he's a father. He feels about you with a fatherly kind of love. Now, I want you to grasp that for a minute. That his feelings toward you are that of a father's love. Now, I know where you're going. If you didn't have a good father, then that statement that I just made may send you in a wrong place emotionally. If, if you grew up with a father who was absent, then you don't have anything to compare that to. That's why I love the scriptures, because Matthew records for us in chapter six, verses nine through 13. It's what we call the model prayer. Matthew records for us there, brothers and sisters, what Jesus says to his disciples about the father's character, about the father's desire, about the father's feelings toward us. He discloses that in giving us the model prayer. Listen to what he says in verse number nine. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus gives us some insight about God being our Father. But the first thing he establishes for us in this model of prayer, expressing uh, how we ought to pray, and then revealing to us how God feels about the prayer he's anticipating and expecting his children to pray. He says, listen, Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. But what simply means in short, that being a father to us, God is saying, my character can be trusted. I want you to understand that you have in God a father whose character can be trusted. I just said with you a few minutes ago, stop thinking that your conduct is changing God's character. Stop thinking that your behavior is causing God to have some uh, bipolar experience up to day, down tomorrow. No, his character can be trusted. Hallowed be thy name. All that's simply saying is that God's character his integrity, his word, his essence is holy. That you have in God a father who is not, you ready for this, emotional. Oh, sometimes my children tell me, Dad, you're doing a little too much. You're just doing too much, Dad. Uh, Dad, Dad you, you're taking that too far. God is not a father who is emotional. Look at Adam and Eve in the garden. Here they are disobeying God. 
having disobeyed God, life was perfect, everything was the way they needed it to be, and they disobeyed God, and the Bible says that God comes walking in the cool of the evening. And he doesn't come pulling up trees and kicking down mountains. He says, Adam, where are you, buddy? Why? Because God's character is not uh, shortened by our conduct. He wouldn't be God. Does he get angry? Yes. Does he have wrath? Yes. But for those of us who are his children, because of our faith in Jesus Christ, we are blocked from his wrath. And the scriptures teach us that his anger is just but for a moment. The, the scriptures teach us that where their sin abound, grace did much more because God is our father, which means you can trust his character. But that's not the only thing you can do. How he feels about you, he is your father. And if you've never received Jesus Christ as savior, he wants to be your father. He wants to offer you a relationship. But not only uh, does this fatherhood speak to his character being trusted, but look at verse number 11. He says, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us not our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Listen to what he says here. And this is so important. And I'm so glad to spend this time with you. I really am. Because it gives me an opportunity to be personal with you. Because I believe that what God is getting ready to do in your life and where you are right now, you need to have the assurance of how he feels about you. It's not only trust in his character, but he says, give us this day our daily bread. And then he goes on to say, forgive us our sins, our trespasses, as we forgive those who are trespassing against us. What is he teaching us here about God's feelings? Watch this. His character can not only be trusted, but his provisions are certain. Hey, my friend, how you doing? This is Bishop Clark. Listen, I hope you're being blessed by this word. I hope that you are receiving exactly what it is you need to hear from God. Because I believe when you come anticipating God to say something to you, God says to you exactly what you need to hear. Listen, I wanted to take this time to share with you, those of you all who are part of our online church. And I say a part of our online church because we understand that the church is not a building. The church are the people. Those of us who've received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are a part of the church. So whether in person or online, we are united through the blood of Jesus Christ. And those of you all who sense that this is a place that God has blessed you, that God speaks to you, that God empowers you, encourages you. And when given opportunity to do ministry with us, you do so. I'm going to ask you to sow a seed of $25. Each month, we're going to ask those who are watching us online, as well as who's in person, that you would sow a seed, whatever that amount that God leads us to ask for that month. Now, listen. I want you to understand something, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. If you do not have, it's going to cause you to not to be able to pay some bill, then we're not asking you for that. We're asking those of you all who believe that God is with us and what God is doing in us and through us is working, and in actuality, it has impacted your life. I'm going to ask you to give. So that sheet of $25. $25 is not a lot of money, but when we all do it together, that little bit adds to a lot and we can make an impact. There's so many things that we're doing. The campuses that we have, they're in Antioch, they're in Tracy, uh, in Oakland, though we're meeting at Council Mott. So there's so many things that are going on. And I just wanted to come in to let you know that we need your help and your support. This is not a babe. This is an ass. Bible says you have not because you ask not. So those of you all who can give a seed of twenty-five dollars, we would that you would do that. The information is there on the screen. We're also asking those who believe in tithing that you would give the tithe. Here at Word, we don't believe that you tithe so that God can love you more. We believe tithing 
is not an expression for God to do something for us. That tithing is an expression that we're grateful for what God has already done for us. We tithe because we want God to know that he's a priority in our finances. And then those of you all who will share a seed based upon the word that you've received. If what I have said has been a blessing to you, I would that you would do so. Information on how you can give to myself as well as to the ministry is there on me. Thank you so much for partners. Knowing this, that this is good soil. And I pray that what you have given to us, God will in turn reward you for your good. Father, thank you for your people when given honest facts will do the right thing. Bless you for everyone who's given. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I hope you're blessed by this word. Peace. As your father, you can trust his character, but then you can trust him to give you what you need. Now watch this. This is going to blow your mind. Notice the priority Jesus places these requests. He says, ask the father for what you need before you tell the father where you're wrong. Good God am I. He says, ask the father for what you need before you tell the father where you've gone wrong. Why is that so important, Bishop Clark? Because many of us think that God withholds from us what we need when we find ourselves having done wrong. What kind of father would he be to say, I'm not going to give you what you need, not uh, what you want, not what you desire, but I'm not going to give you what you need to live because you've done something wrong. That's not God, your father. And Jesus makes it clear that the priority to, for the father is giving you what you need to live more and above where you went wrong. Now, is he concerned about us doing wrong? Of course he is. Does this hurt his heart? Yes, it does. But what he teaches us that as a father, your actions are not going to keep me from taking care of you. And somebody who's watching me, you know that to be true. Because if your heavenly father did not give you what you need when you had done wrong, then all of us would be in a world of trouble. But thanks be to God that he's not that kind of father. He not only gives us a uh, father, his character can be trusted. Not only is he given us what we need and we need that which it takes for us to live. But then he says, forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debts against us. Now, here's what he's literally saying. When we think about this forgiving our debts, we immediately think we're talking about asking God to forgive us for what we've done to him. But when you look at the context of, of the prayer, what he's saying is, God, forgive me for those that I have done wrong. Just like I'm forgiving those who've done wrong to me. Do you not know that your heavenly father gives you both? He gives you the strength to forgive others and he gives, watch this, others the strength to forgive you? Do you not know that your heavenly father is in the business of forgiveness? And you today need to know that he's not holding grudges against you. That's why he doesn't want you to hold grudge against somebody else. You need to know that he's not keeping a record for your demise. He's not keeping a record to show you one day uh, he's going to get you back. No, that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about when he talks about judgment for those of us who are believers, the judgment seat of Christ. And that's a whole nother subject within itself. But, but he's not playing tit for tat. He's giving you and I what we need to forgive. Why? Listen to this. Because he knows that living for him is made evident when we're able to live good with them. I'm going to say that again. Our Heavenly Father gives us the strength to forgive and gives others the strength to forgive us. He's in the business of forgiveness because He knows that living for Him 
is going to be seen on how well we live for them. So I want you to embrace that he's a father who feels for you. He's a father who's providing for you. Then the last thing, and I'm getting ready to go. I hope this is helping you. You not only as a father can you trust his character. Not only as a father can you count on his uh, provisions. They're dependable. But his protection is certain. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Better translation of that, deliver us from the evil one. Do you not know that as your heavenly father, God gives the enemy, you ready for this? How far he can go? Now, I really need you to feel this. Your heavenly father feels so much love for you that he's not going to allow the enemy to bring anything in your life that he can't give you the strength to resist, that he can't give you the strength to overcome. I'd like to say it this way. Every temptation that hits your plate, the father tastes it first. Every temptation that comes into your life, God has allowed it to come because he knows he's put within you what it's needed to overcome it. So today, I want you to square your shoulders, lift your head up, and declare that God of the universe is a father to me. And I can trust his character. I can count on his provision. And I can count on his protection. And when you embrace that, listen to me, you'll start feeling a whole lot better. Listen, if you've heard this message and you're saying, Bishop Clark, I hear you, I agree with you, and I just need prayer that I can embrace God as my father. I want to pray for you. But then I also want to pray, also want to pray for that person who would love to have this assurance, but you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to pray for you as well. Don't leave. God's going to say something to you that I believe is going to change your life. Tune in next week and let's hear what God has to say from his word about how he feels about us. God bless Hey, my friend, listen. As a result of hearing the word, I pray that something stirred in your spirit and maybe you're the person that doesn't have a relationship with the Lord. And I'm not talking about whether you watch church a lot or you read your Bible or you've gone to church, you were brought up in church. I'm talking about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's something you have to do for yourself. And I'm going to pray this prayer and I want you to repeat these words. Believing by faith the words that you say, Jesus will come in immediately and make you part of the family. If you can, bow just right where you are. Just repeat these words. Lord Jesus, forgive me for all my sins. I believe that you died on the cross. And on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. Right now, Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart and I receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, I want to thank you for becoming part of the family. Welcome to the family. Now you're entitled to all the benefits. God is your Father. Jesus is your Savior, your Lord, and your example. And life gets better when you continue to trust God in every situation. Listen, doesn't mean you won't have problems. It means now you've got a problem solver. Be blessed. God bless you. And again, welcome to the family. It is God for me. It is God for me. Can't you see all the ways he's been blessing me? Praise him. I say glory be to him. 
blessings come from him. So praise him. He woke me up this morning, gifted me with life to live. My home, my help for everything. 